yes, the microphone has now arrived just after it is no longer needed. Never mind! Uh, okay, so, uh, hi, uh, my name is Matthew, and uh, I'm a xyrophobic. Sorry, I better explain that one. Uh, that means I'm afraid of razors. <laughs> I must apologize to anyone in the room who suffers from pogonophobia. Uh, which is fear of beards. Uh, and after saying xyrophobia and pogonophobia, I must also apologize to anyone suffering from Helenologophobia, uh, which is a fear of scientific terminology. <laughs> after that, it would be wrong not to apologize to anyone suffering from a fear of long words, uh, which of course is Hippopotamonstrosis cupidaliophobia. Uh, now there is actually a phobia called phobophobia, which is the fear of phobias. Uh, but to anyone suffering from that, uh, all I can say is, you have nothing to fear. <laughs> fear itself. Oh dear, 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 dear. It is a long way to go for a groaner like that one, folks. But, but those are just a couple of phobias that I could sort of weave a sort of a narrative through. The, the ones that I could fit into that hilarious piece of well-crafted wordplay. You know, I mean, there's loads of them out there. There's, uh, there's Arachiobutria phobia. Uh, which is the fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth and suffocating you. Uh, or my own personal favourite, uh, anatodeophobia, uh, which is the fear that somewhere, somehow, a duck is watching you. It's 100% true. There's also metathesiophobia, which is the fear of change, which explains why I've been telling those phobia jokes for about 10 years. But, uh, what else? Uh, I'm also an academic. I, I am, I'm a comedian and an academic, and uh, I don't know if anyone wants to guess uh, what I study. Uh, yourself, sir. Do you, want, do you want to guess what I study? Uh, chemistry. Chemistry? <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's computer science, actually. Uh, will you take that from me, sir? That, what, what's your name, my friend? Danny. Uh, Danny, will you mix that up for me, Danny? That is a Rubik's Cube. Uh, as a friend of mine once said, a Rubik's Cube is an awful lot like your cock. The longer you play with it, the harder it gets. Uh, so you have a bit of fun with that there for a couple of minutes, Danny, and I'll come back to you shortly. Right. No, that's right, folks. I'm a computer scientist, and as a computer scientist, I spend an awful lot of time on the internet, you know? Uh, there's, there's more than porn on the internet, actually. And no, 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 there is, there is. There's lists of phobias as well. But, <laughs> But no, I'm uh, yeah, I'm a computer scientist and uh, and uh, you know and uh, what did I yeah I I did a PhD in uh, in, in computer vision okay computer vision which is uh, image analysis computers that know what they're looking at CCTV that that knows what it's looking at and stuff like that it's it's tricky stuff I actually struggled to complete my PhD and you know there's there's, there's academics in the room here you know how how difficult it can be to 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 do to pursue a career in research but it's a lot harder if you're not motivated by it you know <laughs> like. Yeah, if you've moral objections to your own work, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit different. I, I was doing person profiling in CCTV with a focus on gender recognition from full body imagery. Uh, that, that's what I was doing. But basically, that is, uh, you know, your, your camera's walking down the street, it sees someone walking down the street, it goes, is that a man, is that a woman? So there, so, so there you go, it's a comedian talking to you about the differences between men and women, you know? <laughs> Nothing new there. But uh, no, any, any of you that have, uh, you know, di digital, uh, digital cameras and things like that, you know they can detect faces now on your phone and things like that, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. They can do so much more, you know, that, uh, not, not really on the phone, but if you've got a system that's suitable, it can detect a face, it can analyze a face, and it's fairly reliable on being able to, like, predict age or gender or whatever else from faces. But I was doing CCTV from further back, from far away, and, you know, you don't have cooperative subjects when you're talking with CCTV, so you, you, have, you have to look at other cues. You're not looking at faces, you're looking at body, you're looking at whatever else. Now, like I say, I was doing gender recognition. To do gender recognition, you need a balanced data set of male and female subjects. Now, in the computer science department of a university, <laughs> that is a little bit difficult. But I was determined to do to do this, and I, I, I bought myself a treadmill. Uh, I'm, yes, that's right. I, ma I managed to convince the university to let me spend university money uh, buying a treadmill to record people walking on it to analyse the difference between men and women. Uh, they rejected the proposal to let me buy a trampoline, but, uh, <laughs> but you do what you can. Uh, my friend, can I get that cue back? Because I'm only doing 10 minutes and I better, uh, I better actually work with it. But uh, I'll go off mic if you don't mind. It's a, it's a short set, but it'd be a lot longer if I was sitting quietly just... Uh, 
Well, yes. I'll go off mic because they haven't invented the hands-free cube yet, you know? Uh, and when they do, it'll remove some of the challenge. But, uh, I'll keep talking, as I say. Uh, but yes, I was doing the, um, I was do I was doing the recording the data set because Computers, they're fairly reliable. They could look at this and they would know that this is yellow and this is red and so on, and that's no problem. But you want to do a bit more. And I was looking at the way people walk, the way they move. You know, there's something in the way she moves. You know, you can see, you can see when someone walks down the street, there's hip swagger or whatever. And a, you know, there are certain cues. Long hair is not always a good cue, but uh, there, there are certain cues and you can pick things up. We as people, as human beings, our visual systems are perfectly uh, developed to, to be able to pick up on these cues. And we were trying to see whether you could train a computer to do the same thing. So I was analysing people walking on the treadmill and doing what I was doing. But, like I said, I was determined to get me balanced data set. That, that was the important thing for me. I fell out with my supervisor over this. I fell out with my supervisor because he was determined. He, in his eyes, you know, it wasn't that important. You know, computer vision, the basic gist of computer vision is you take, a, you take an image, you break it down into a numerical representation of that image, you take like 100 male examples, 100 female examples, throw them into an artificial intelligence learning algorithm, it looks for patterns, blah, 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 and then you come along with a new example in the same format and you go, what do you think this is? That's, that's the basic gist of it. I says, right, I need me 100 male, me 100 female, that's important. He was like, no, 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 you don't need that. We'll, we'll use my class every year, we'll build it up over time, you know, uh, and you crack on with the actual representations, the, how, how you get that done. It, you'll get through it faster. I'm like, it doesn't work like that, you know. He says, hi, yeah, yeah, but you don't need to do class A versus class B. You can do class A versus not class A. So if you just use my class and it's mostly young males, uh, and you build up a set of young males, and you go, if it's not young male, and it's only looking at people, then it must be female or whatever. That, that was his argument. And he basically said, well, he says, let's face it, he says, you know, young males hanging around in hoodies around bus stops, you know, that's what we're looking for in a CCTV context. And I was like, no, no, I am really, really opposed to that. You know, I, I was really, really uncomfortable with that sort of attitude, you know. Now, on the other hand, maybe he had a point, you know. I mean, the, the, the goal of artificial intelligence and computer vision in general, you know, is to build a system that acts and thinks like the human mind, you know. So if we can build a system that's prejudiced, you know, success. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, I, I wasn't. I wasn't comfortable with it. I, I pushed back against it, but I did eventually get my uh, my balanced data set, and I cracked on with the thing. But I I struggled with the PhD. You know, there was that. There was there was moral objections to the big. You know, it's, it's very Big Brother. You know, very Big Brother is watching you. It's, I'm making eyes for Skynet. You know, that's, <laughs> for those of you not familiar with uh, with Skynet, the Terminator films. You know, and, and anyone not familiar with the plot of the Terminator films is basically uh, in a world where time travel exists. Uh, you can make the same film about five times and get away with it, you know? <laughs> but it's also the machines rising up and taking over and things like that. You know? Now, what I'm doing, the type of artificial intelligence that I was doing, it's, it's, not, it's not that. It's not proper uh, general intelligence. It's, it's, it's basic pattern recognition, and that's, you know, that, that's not too dangerous. But, the, you know, there are prominent academics that are quite concerned about what could happen if we ever actually did achieve genuine, genuine artificial intelligence, that, you know, machines can actually think for themselves. Because then you know they could start progressing at a rate faster than whatever you know, uh, faster than us, and, and take us over. And, and you know, who, who knows where it could end? You know, prominent, high-profile academics have, have raised these concerns. You know, uh, Stephen Hawking has, has raised these concerns. At least we think Stephen Hawking has raised these concerns. Uh, there, there is a possibility that Stephen's voice, Stephen Hawking's voice box has become self-aware and is just trying to throw us off the scent. You know, but, uh, but, uh, but no. I, I, I struggled. I struggled with the PhD. There were, there were signs that it really wasn't for me. I wasn't. I wasn't enjoying it, uh, and, I, and I probably should have given up. You know, I, I stuck with it and I got to the end. But there, there's potential that I maybe should have cut my losses and run. I, 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 I struggled with it in the middle, as, as many people do. But I was really struggling. I was. I was properly, uh, you know, opposed to it, and I, I was struggling to, to to stick with it. This is mind and body. It wasn't good for my own mental health trying to stick with it. You know, but I did. I, I stuck. I did. Uh, you know, I stuck with it because my parents instilled in me a, a mastermind mentality. You know, I've started, so I'll finish. Uh, but for me, the PhD, it wasn't mastermind. It was, it was fucking pointless is what it was. <laughs> but, but I stuck with it. I, I, I got to the end of it. I, I, I did what I did. And I, uh, uh, I, I did. I, I, I finished it. I'm strictly speaking a doctor, but... Uh, <laughs> 
but this is what I do for a living, so... <laughs> no, I don't actually, I, I lecture. Uh, I lecture now and, and teach a focused uh, lectureship, but I'm, I'm very happy there. I, I play to much bigger audiences than I do in comedy, but it's, <laughs> but it's good. Um, now, I think I'm only meant to do 10 minutes, so I'm, I'm out of time. I'm, uh, before I go, I better finish this Rubik's Cube, you know, because if you get up on stage with a Rubik's Cube and you don't finish it, you know, it's very, very anticlimactic. It's also very distracting, you know. It's been distracting you from what I've been saying, it's been distracting me from what I've been doing as well. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, everyone.